Hi guys, and welcome to the Tavern. My name is Mitch. I am the lead developer of Tavern Tales Tabletop Adventures, and I wanted to show you some tips and tricks on how to use the game, some of the tools that are available to you, both as a player and a DM, and just kind of give you a feel for what the game is and how it works. We are here right now in the tavern. This is where a lot of the game actually takes place. This is where you'll actually play games with your players, uh, as well as just kind of mess around. There's all sorts of little things to help with your role play and just kind of have fun with your friends. Uh, let's go ahead and head on over to the table here. And I wanted to show you a couple quick things. So here you have your call outs right here on your hands. If you ever forget what's going on, just look at your hands and you will see just about every action that's available to you right now showing you right here in the hands. Uh, let's go ahead and pull up the menu and we will see, this is the DM menu, the player menu is a little bit differently. Uh, and we see right now, we'll just kind of go through these from top to bottom. First and foremost, let's go ahead and click on our creature shelf. These are all the shelves we have of all the objects available to you. Creature shelf, just like it is, you have all of these creature minis available. Uh, you have them organized kind of easily into uh, letters, into their categorical names, uh, as well as the option for custom minis and you know your animals and player minis as well. Uh, for your campaigns. Let's go ahead and grab one of my favorites here, the Storm Giant. He looks pretty cool. We'll put him down here. All minis, all items in your game have a couple different options that you can do with them. For minis, you have the option to turn gravity on and off. So if you want them to act like a regular object in the real world, you can do that. You also have the ability to turn gravity off and they will just float there. So if you need something flying or if you need to place it at an irregular position that you couldn't usually place a mini, well, you can do that as well. Uh, all objects can also be duplicated infinitely uh, to create as many as you want. You also have the ability to, while holding it, you can delete your mini with Y. You can delete any item you want. As you hover over it, you'll see your hover outline. Uh, and then you can interact with it. Lastly, you have the ability to scale. Hold your mini and press A, or any item for that matter. Uh, you have different axes that you can scale on, or you can just scale directly on the main piece and scale the whole thing up uniformly, like you'd expect. If you want, you can also grab on a single axis, and whoa, here he goes, now he's a tall guy, now he's a short one. You have the ability to squash and stretch every item, which gives them a lot more usability, uh, especially when it comes to things like scenery. So let's say you've got you know, a, a tree here. Let's go ahead and grab this one. Uh, you could place it down and you could place a bunch of these and hey, you've got a whole forest going on, but you know that doesn't look great. You could maybe do a little bit of scaling on these to give them all a different feel. And now you'll see your forest starting to come along with a much more natural vibe because everything's kind of at different angles. Let's go ahead and get rid of these as well. Uh, you've got plenty of scenery pieces. You've also got buildings, all kinds of buildings, different styles, different shapes. We can flip through them here and we'll see even more. You've also got props. These are kind of like set pieces for all your scenery just to add a little bit more character to your builds, both interior and exterior. Lastly, you have your dungeon tiles. And these kind of act a little bit differently from everything else because they snap on a grid. You can turn this off, but uh, it makes it a lot easier to place pieces if you're gonna be doing that in a grid. You know, like any dungeon that you'd expect, it's kind of all built out in a grid pattern and every item here on these shelves lines up to this grid so that you can place these items just like you'd expect uh, and they all fit and work perfectly together. Doesn't matter what piece it is, you can fit it and it works on the grid. Uh, here you also have options for, like let's say we go back to one of the buildings here and you're trying to place all these buildings, it's a nice town. Uh, you don't wanna spend every single second trying to like oh, place all of these perfectly level. Well, hey, we've got some snapping options here. By default, everything's on free rotate, but you can do snap flat, which makes sure that you still got this rotation, but no matter what you do this way, it's gonna stay flat. You've also got the same thing for 90 degree rotation. You can make sure it stays on a 90 degree axis uh, with a little bit more flexibility. There's also 45 degree rotation. Uh, you've got a few other options here and I'm going to cover them in time, but what we're going to do first is show you the save slots. So let's go ahead and clear the table 
Yes, I want to clear all these pieces. Save slots allow you to build and then place maps down uh, mid-game. So let's say we're going to go ahead and do this one. Oh, here's a life-size map. This one uh, was built by one of our players in the game itself. They took all the pieces and scaled them up to huge size. So now you are living you know, in the world. You can absolutely do that as one of the things. You can set table images if you want. Uh, you can set uh, custom minis, and those are the ones I was talking about right there, where you can have a picture as like a coin or even a upright mini. You can set that. Uh, but these allow you to pre-build maps and then load them in mid-game. You also have the ability to turn the tavern on and off. You can turn it off, the tavern's gone, and you can set different sky boxes around you if you want, evening, night, maybe inside a cave, underwater, it's all an option for you. Let's go ahead and turn the tavern back on. Uh, and Let's go ahead and load in this map here, and I will show you using this, the lighting system. So this allows you to give a different vibe to your maps. Let's say this one we wanted to be a night scene. Let's go ahead and turn into a dark blue and turn the tavern on. And now we see the whole thing is cast into a dark blue light. So we can give this more of a night feel. You could give it, you know, like let's say the plane of fire. Everything's a dark, angry red. Uh, it's all an option there for you. You've also got grid tools. And this allows you to turn on a grid that is on your map. You can then take these two pieces here and scale the grid to whatever size you want. Each measurement here, each square is five units of distance, whether that's feet, meters, doesn't matter. It's up to you. Uh, but once you've set that, you can then measure distances by holding down B and then using your trigger to point, let's say we want one here and then over here, and we can see, well, that's 26.8. You can measure distances even from way back here. You can say, well, okay, well, how far is it from here to, you know, over there? As the DM, if you're maybe not playing, you want to be, okay, well, while they're figuring that out, let's try to figure out how I could move. Or if you want, you can hold down B and grab a mini, and we'll see that from the point of origin of that mini, we now have a distance of how far it's flying. So this dragon, let's say it has 60 feet of flying. Well, we can know that it could get on this map all the way over here on its turn. Just to help you to keep your measurements down, very standard tabletop RPG stuff. Uh, lastly, you have the ability to do fog of war. This is a cube that I can see through as the DM, but the players cannot. It's a solid black cube for the players. So let's say we scale it up and I don't want them to see, you know, this portion of the map right here. Well, now they can't. Uh, and that can be saved and loaded with the maps. By default, when you load in a map, everything is locked. You can't pick up any of the pieces, but you have the ability here to unlock that if you need to mid game, move something around. And this just helps you not to accidentally move stuff around while you're middle of playing your game. Those are the build tools. You also have a different set of play tools. And these are the things that you would use while playing the game. Things like handouts. These are things that you can build beforehand from the player portal at taverntalesgame.com. The player portal is where you will invite players to your games. It's where you will create new games. You can uh, build out handouts, DM notes, anything that's typing heavy, something that takes a little bit of time to do in VR on a VR keyboard that would just absolutely stink, you have the ability to do from the player portal, uh, from a computer, from a phone, to make that a lot easier. There's a lot of management that you can do, including stuff like setting a image as the table or creating those custom minis. Uh, that's all done from the player portal at taverntalesgame.com. You've also got DM notes. Let's say we want to do this. This is something that you type up beforehand and you have available to you as the DM to read through just kind of notes to help you stay on track and make sure you're doing what you need to in the game. Uh, you also have counters. These allow you to keep track of any value that you want, maybe something that's non-standard or something that you weren't expecting to. Uh, you can do that from right here. Some people uh, use them as player or uh, enemy health, they can kind of keep them all there. Uh, you also have the option to laser using your trigger and click on a uh, mini and you have this come up. These are 
unique to each mini, and you can set the player, the player or uh, monster's health and manage that directly from the monster itself just by clicking on it, and you can manage their health. Uh, from here, you also have the ability to turn on and off the DM screen. You've got your save slots. You also have area of effect templates. These allow you to measure certain areas on the map. This also uses the grid measurement that we've already set up here. Uh, let's say we want to scale this up. This person needs a you know item or a magical spell that does a 20 foot cube radius. Well, here you go. You can see, okay, well that's gonna affect such and such a location. Uh, you also have the option for ambience and music. So let's say in this scenario, uh, we want the sound of maybe a harbor. And here we go, we've got that. You can really set the scene, set the tone for whatever you're doing. Uh, I mean, there's quite a few different soundscapes available off the bat here for different soundscapes that you might want your players to be in. Let's go ahead and stop that and move over to our music. So this is curated playlists of music that you might want to use as a DM to really set the tone of the map that you guys are playing in. If you're in uh, a tavern, well, maybe let's use Bright. This is, you know, music that you may hear in a tavern. Let's say uh, a player character just died or one of their favorite NPCs. We've got mournful music. This is stuff that really just helps kind of set the scene for what you're doing. And these are curated plays that I've built out for, uh, you know, based on basically the mood rather than specific song titles. Uh, lastly, you've also got some settings here, but I'll let you explore those on your own time. The other things we have down here is dice options. Let's say we want to go here and um, you can roll dice anywhere in the tavern. You could also roll them in a tower or even a tray. Let's go ahead and grab the tray and just throw it over here for now. Uh, and you can also choose the dice skin that you want to use. Uh, some of these are default and some of them are uh, dice that you can purchase from the store. Looks like we left the music on there. Let's go ahead and stop that. Uh, so let's go back to our dice. Uh, in here, once you set those, you can turn on your dice by holding down the A button, grab as many of any dice that you want, and either just throw them, and you'll see your dice result right up there, or let's say we want two D6 and a D12 and a D20. You can also bring them over to your tray or your tower and drop them in there, and you'll see the result. If you wanna see the breakdown of those, that's fine. You can laser point on that, and you'll get the breakdown of what was rolled, as well as each individual value. You do also have a web browser. This is the browser that you can use to access any content you want from online in your game. And you've also got a initiative tracker. Here, by default, you have four enemy trackers, enemy uh, initiative trackers. And any player that joins the game will automatically show up right here. They're blue, they show their username, and you can move those as well to choose you know, what order the players are going in as well as what order your creatures are going in. Again, pretty standard tabletop RPG stuff. Uh, and from the DM tool set, that is about everything.